Welcome to Whiskey War. Every week we take two whiskeys and we pit them against each other. And this week it's Battle of the Finishes. So we're going to take Okentoshan Blood Oak, finished in a red wine cask, and Glenfiddich's Fire and Cane, which is finished in a rum cask. We're going to try both of them side by side and see which one comes out on top. We do videos like this every week. We do whiskey wars, we do whiskey news, and we give away free bottles of premium whiskey every month. So if you haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, make sure you do it. And let's get this whiskey war started. As always, we'll look at these two whiskeys across our three areas. So we'll look at the nose, the palate, and the finish. And let's start with the Okentoshan Blood Oak finished in a red wine cask, which just rolls trippingly off the tongue. Uh, so starting on the nose, it's very light. Uh, it, I was surprised. This is actually quite high ABV considering it's a relatively mass market whiskey. So this is 46% ABV, but you're really not getting a lot of strong ethanol alcohol on the nose. This sort of light sort of berries, currant, like maybe, um, well, I guess you could say like a red currant, which makes sense because I don't know if you can tell, but this is very, very red. Hence, hence the name. You might say it's red like blood. I wouldn't say that because that would be pandering to marketing and I am no slave to marketing. But it does smell like red currants and other sort of berry type notes. So on the palate, the, those berry notes, definitely carry through. So as a sweetness, this is definitely a, a sweet whiskey opposed to a dry or an off dry whiskey. The alcohol, despite being sort of 46%, which is relatively high, uh, is very well integrated. I think on the palate, this is, uh, this is really smooth. So maybe a good whiskey for someone that's trying to make that step up to higher ABV alcohol. This is a good place to start. It's well integrated. It isn't too aggressive in your palate. Moving on to the body. It's, uh, it's a really nice, light-bodied whiskey. And because those sort of flavors of the black currant carry through, it's interesting with that light body that's holding those up because the intensity, sort of the, the berry flavors are really pronounced. You definitely get really strong notes of berries and currants. As I said before, that sort of red currants, um, not quite like a strawberry, but general sort of berry notes, really nice sweetness carries through. And looking at the finish, not overwhelmed by the finish. It's maybe it's a medium length finish. It's not simple. Uh, it definitely has some complexity, but I wouldn't necessarily say it has some complexity in the sense that there's a lot that it's giving you. It's definitely not a simple finish. It's just got a bit to it, but it's not offering loads. It's mostly those same kind of nice berry notes that go from the nose onto the palate and onto the finish. It just carries through really cleanly, which is nice if you're looking for that sort of flavor in a whiskey. It's not necessarily challenging, but it does this one thing very well. Let's try the Glenfiddich Fire and Cane. On the nose, quite inviting actually. It's, it's a medium intensity. It's sweet, but in a very different way, a different kind of sweetness that we had in the Blood Oak. This is sort of like molasses, heavy sweetness. And it's really nice on the nose. Um, moving on to the palate. Again, that sweetness really carries through. So my, my first note obviously is going to be that it's still sweet. Um, the alcohol is 
is interesting because so this isn't 40%, we're at 43%. Oh, it should have a bit more ABV. Well, it does have a bit more ABV, ABV, arguably 3% more ABV than our standard Glenfiddich. Uh, but you can't tell. This is actually, it's a really soft whiskey. And so the firing cane would probably be a good some a good thing to give to someone who's starting out in whiskey. This might be a good sort of advanced beginner whiskey. Uh, it's very, very easy to drink, very soft. The body is light, with sort of a medium intensity of, well, I guess the best way to describe it, and not to give totally into marketing, is um, like spiced rum. It tastes like Captain Morgan's spiced rum. It's that same kind of flavor, that same kind of sweetness that comes through, that sweet but a bit peppery. It's, it's nice. Again, maybe still thinking of that whole palette going through. I've said sweetness, soft, light, medium intensity, um, somewhat one-dimensional, and I think that leads into this finish. Which just to, yeah, it's a bit, I know you can be overwhelmed, you can be underwhelmed. This is just whelmed. I mean, it's, it's not bad, it's short, it's simple, it's got a couple of those hints of that rum spiciness that comes through, but overall, it's not a terribly challenging or complex whiskey. It does a couple of interesting things, but uh, let's, let's now take it and let's talk about this in comparison with the Blood Oak. I've got a couple of feelings about whiskeys that are finished in exotic casks. I think sometimes it can be done really well, and finishing in a unique wine cask can sometimes produce amazing and interesting flavors. Sometimes it feels like a couple of brands can put whiskeys out there that are finished in interesting casks just for the sake of doing it, and they do produce different types of spirits, which do give you different flavors of whiskey, but maybe the, the sum isn't greater than the sum of its parts. That's not quite the expression I mean, but you know what I'm getting at. And when I'm talking about these ones, I think both of these set out to do whiskeys finished in interesting casks. And they do, in fact, create whiskeys that are finished in interesting casks. But I don't know if it adds a lot to the whiskey. So if we start with the Oak and Toshin Blood Oak. And first off, the color is amazing because I don't know if you can see that, but that's epic. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful red color, um, which, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that it tastes good, but it sure looks great in the glass. And it doesn't taste bad. Uh, this is a really nice, smooth whiskey with some pronounced berry currant flavors. And that's cool. And, you know, that's kind of what I expect from something that's been finished in a red wine cask. And it does that well. Uh, I guess the thing to me, though, is that it's just, it's a bit one-dimensional. Like, yes, this whiskey is interesting. Yeah, it's finished in a cool cask, but it doesn't necessarily make me feel like they've really gone above and beyond. I think Okintoshin makes some really good, interesting whiskey, and I don't necessarily think that by taking their good whiskey and putting it into an exotic red wine cask, has exponentially increased the delicious factor. Yeah, this is a good whiskey. It's well executed, but I don't think it's a very good whiskey. And I'd probably say a similar thing about the Glenfiddich Fire and Cane. This is a nice, sweet, soft whiskey with some interesting spicy flavors. When I try the Glenfiddich Fire and Cane, I absolutely think it tastes like it's been finished in a rum cask. And that's cool. If you're looking for a whiskey that tastes like it's been finished in a rum cask and you want to know what rum might do to a whiskey, 
then buy a bottle of this because yeah, that is what this tastes like. But I don't necessarily think it does amazing things to this whiskey. Yes, this is a nice whiskey to drink. I just don't think I'm blown away by it. So like the Blood Oak, um, I think that the Firing Cane from Glenfiddich is a good whiskey. And if you get the opportunity to drink these, absolutely give them a try. I just don't think that they've necessarily created something that's greater than the sum of its parts. Let us know though what you think of these whiskeys in the comments down below. Uh, if you've got fantastic stories about whiskeys that are finished in exotic casks, let me know because maybe that will change my view and give me an interesting thing to try um, because I really like hearing from you. And I hope you enjoyed this video.